Hello. In this video, I'm going to give a short overview of how you can use weights and biases to deploy your custom models to SageMaker endpoints automatically from weights and biases in a really easy way, capturing the pipeline for reproducibility as we do so. And there's a few key steps here. The first is we're going to be using weights and biases for experiment tracking. So we're going to be logging our metrics, our hyperparameters, but also the actual models themselves to weights and biases. And this means from here, we can do the deployment to SageMaker endpoints. We're also going to support complex or custom inference pipelines. So this typically means we need to create custom containers to run them on SageMaker endpoints. But the cool thing is we can also track this with weights and biases as well. And this means we can see which deployments used which models, which containers they were deployed to, who done the deployment and when, the code, the hyperparameters and so on. All of this will be tracked for us. We're also going to need a job that is pretty much just a run template where we can pass in different settings and models each time. There's a few ways of doing this, um, programmatically or via the UI, and we'll see a UI-based workflow today. And typically this deployment step is gonna be pretty frequent. So for a given project or a given inference pipeline, we may deploy many models to it over time as we iteratively improve on the models. So it really makes sense to automate the deployment step. So let's have a look at how we can do this in weights and biases. So Let's go to a project. So here we can see we have a project, there's 99 different training runs. We can see metrics that have been logged, training loss, training accuracy, validation accuracy. Um, and I've already you know, sorted our experiments by validation accuracy. So that's what we're going to choose. So we're going to have a look at our experiments and we're going to decide, we're going to choose the model with the best validation accuracy to deploy. So how would we do that? Well, let's select this experiment and we can see you know, more metrics here as well, some more information about it. If we go to the overview tab, we can see the model that was logged by this run. So it was an artifact output. So it was CLF, the model name, version 56. So you know, we've had a look at the results, we're happy with it, we wanna deploy it. So let's select it. So here we can see we're in the artifacts tab of the weights and biases um, project. And we have this link to registry button so we have set up um, an automation such that any time you add a model version to this AGI model registry, it'll be deployed to SageMaker endpoints. So all we have to do is link this version to the registry. We're gonna see a small notification now to say it's been added. So let's go and have a look at this. So this is our AGI registered model. Here's our model card. If I scroll down, we can see version three logged by upbeat sweep 55 has now been added to our model registry and we can see we have an automation here that's going to take any version of the model that's been added to this registry and deploy it to SageMaker. We can also be more advanced and say only do this deployment, run the, only run this automation if the version has specific tags like production. So let's have a look at this inference queue which is where our model is actually going to be um, the deployment is going to take place. So let's have a look at it. Okay, so we can see that it's currently running, which is great. Um, so let, this might take a few minutes just for SageMaker to do the actual deployment. Okay, so I've navigated to Amazon SageMaker. I'm looking at our endpoints and I can see that this endpoint is currently in this process of being created. Okay, great. So now we can see our model that we've deployed from Weights and Biases is finally in service. And we can see it has this name here, CLF. V56. So let's go back to weights and biases. So let's have a look and we should see that it's finished. Perfect. We can see that this is the run. So let's have a look at the run. We didn't log any metrics, so there's no charts, but we can see here that um, we have the endpoint name and it is indeed the same endpoint name that we saw in SageMaker endpoints. So we can keep track of which runs deployed which models. But more than that, so not only have we just deployed the model to SageMaker endpoints automatically. Um, we also have lineage. So let's go to the artifacts tab of our project. So we can actually group by job type and we can see that there's different types of jobs within this. So, you know, we have training jobs, there's 97 of them. There's been two deployments. The most recent one we've just done, Eager LAN. And we have a container build step. So we have all of this has been tracked. So what does this mean? So let's have a look in, um, our artifacts tab, so if we go to the Docker file, so this is the container that we used, we can see which 
inference images were used for which deployments. So we can see that you know, this Docker file has been used for these two different deployments and eager LAN is the one we've recently done. So let's have a look at it. So maybe we know we've done a deployment. We might have some questions about it. So what we can do is um, have a look and see the lineage around it. So we can see that, you know, this deployment eager lion used version 56 of this model, and this is the training run that produced it and clicking into any of these will give us more information. But we can have a look at a more complete lineage and we can see that this deployment for eager lion used this model, used this Docker file. So this is our image and we can see the entire lifecycle and pipeline of our deployment. Thank you for watching this video and we have lots more information on how you can set this up yourself. Thank you.